Uh, we'll go to Jonathan in Arizona. You're on with Jim and Matt. How are you? Uh, Hello? He's still, oh, he's I, still I, on hold. He didn't hit the button right. I didn't hit the button right. Jonathan, are you there? Hey, I hear you. Uh, okay. <laughs> you guys can hear me now, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, and actually there's two Jonathans. You're the one in Arizona. The other one's in Alabama. So the other Jonathan who just got all excited for a second. Hang on, we'll get right. to you. You're the other A state. We're, we're talking to the one in the hot spot. So, so you're calling in to say that yeah. it's possible to demonstrate how someone can believe something without knowing it? Um, so I'm only saying that because of something else that you said previously. Um, so basically, I was watching an episode earlier when you were co-hosting with Eric on Talk Heathen. And uh, I think the name of the clip was Caller Knows Matt and Eric Believe There Is a God. And one of the things that you had asked him was, how is it possible to believe something without knowing you believe it? Uh, no, no, I would never say that unless I misspoke. The question would be, how okay. is it possible for you to know something and not believe it? There's plenty of things we believe. So knowledge is a subset of belief. And when I say this, I'm saying belief, as I'm using the term, is the acceptance that a proposition is true or likely true. Knowledge mm -hmm. is a subset of that. It is a belief that is held to be true, in my case, to such a high degree of confidence that would be worldview-altering discover it's wrong. In philosophy, it's often called justified true belief. Here's a belief that is justified and true. I have problems with that definition because I don't know how you get to truth, and justification is the entire thing that we're talking about in here. Right. So I, I would never ask someone, how can you, how can you believe, something, believe something without knowing it? Because I think almost everything we believe without knowing and that we use knowledge to describe things we really, 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 really believe. So I don't know if that clears it up or not, but um, it might. Um, so can you just give, give me that again? Like, because uh, I'll, I'll give another example. Like, plenty of callers, Christians have called in and said, "You do believe in God. You're just repressing it." Okay. Like, what would your response to that be? Prove it. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, how that? How that? So this is them telling me what they think I believe, and I'm willing to accept that they think I believe this. Um, I right. just, I, I, I know that I don't believe it. Like, I legitimately do not believe there's a God. I don't know how I could demonstrate this to anyone because we can't read minds and you can't get inside my head. Um, and so all day long, someone can say, well, you really do believe, you're just suppressing it. Well, if you suppress mm -hmm. a belief, doesn't that mean that you don't believe it? Uh, but I don't know that v belief is an act of volition. Like, if I'm actually convinced there's a God, I can certainly claim I don't believe. Right. But I can't actually, I don't know how I could convince myself that I don't, because as soon as I become convinced, I'm no longer. Yeah, this is kind of like you're doing a thought experiment where you're taking the opposite position of what you actually do believe. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know how that would actually work even in that case, because we can only think about things we, we know. Yeah, like if I have, if I'm thinking of a word, like, all right, right, right now, Jonathan, I'm thinking of a four-letter word. Can you guess what it is? I can guess, but I'd probably be wrong. Go for it. Duck. No, but it rhymes with that. <laughs> I had it right. <laughs> the thing is, no matter what you said, I could have said yes, and you have no way to tell whether or not I'm, I'm actually being honest and accurate. Um, or I could have said no, and, because you don't have access to my mind. And so when a caller calls in sure. and says, oh, you really do believe in God, that's them telling me more about them than about me. And they're, they're trying to portray this as if I'm being dishonest or lying. And when they do that, even though they may think they're right, I now know that they're not. I am now completely, as soon as somebody says, I know your mind better than you do, you better damn well be able to prove it. Yeah, um, at least have a, a PhD in psychology or yeah. something along those lines. Like, here's the reason you've been doing this particular action for years and you didn't know about it, because I've made discoveries about me, about what my motivations are. Right. There were, there were uh, something even I discovered within the last few weeks, which I'm not going to talk about on the show, but there was a probably 15-year period of my time where I had a certain perspective on something personal that... I'm now convinced was for completely different reasons than what I thought it was at the time. Um, mm -hmm. We discover things about that. And somebody could have taught me this, but belief, when, I, when I'm using that term, when we're talking about epistemology and propositions, it just means I accept that this particular proposition is likely true. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how one could accept a proposition is likely true 
and then say, I don't believe that. Or actually, mm -hmm. I know how they can say it. Right. So, so is that cleared up? It's, it does in like how I brought it up, but um, because you said um, you don't, you don't believe that you can be absolutely certain of anything. Correct. Am I saying that correctly? I am not convinced that absolute certainty is possible. Okay. So even given that just that you believe that, doesn't that include the possibility that you can't be absolutely certain that you don't believe in a God? I've mm -hmm. never claimed that I'm absolutely certain. I am maximally certain. I'm as certain right. as I can be about what about about my mind right now and all of my positions are tentative so if somebody could actually make a case and prove to me that i really do believe in god and i'm just somehow not aware of it i would accept that if they could make the case or you're just in, in deep denial right right and i absolutely uh, can't do that i was just the, the I, I just thought that that was a way to answer your um like kind of address the possibility that you could believe something and not know that you believe it. Yeah, yes. Because you, you're... I, I, I understand that, Jonathan. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm saying I am not convinced that you could actually believe something and not be aware that you believe it. Um, and, and even that isn't as strong as, as the thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But it, so it, it, there actually is the possibility that you do believe in God and don't know it? No. I'm not saying it's possible. I'm saying I cannot demonstrate that it's impossible. Both possibility and impossibility need to be demonstrated. You don't get to say something's possible until you demonstrate the possibility. And you don't demonstrate the possibility by just showing, oh, you can't prove it's impossible. That's not, if you claim yeah, something, yeah, that's... so you need to make a case that it's actually possible. And that's, right, and I, go ahead. I thought that that's what I just did actually is that, if, if you can't be absolutely certain because you said... No, all you've done is rule out impossibility uh, that I cannot be certain about impossibility, which I didn't claim in the first place. No, I th okay, then I must have spoke. Um, so out of all the things in the world, all, all the things that you can't be absolutely certain about, one of those things would have to include your belief that there is no God, Right. Okay, so first of all, I did not say I have a belief that there is no God. So you've, you've mistakenly put a positive position. I am not convinced there is a God. Absolute certainty. Okay. I'm not convinced that you can be absolutely certain about anything. I don't even know why we're talking about absolute certainty. It's not relevant. Yeah, no, the, the only reason that, that I brought it up was I thought this was actually an argument that you could believe something and not even know that you believed it. If by saying you can't be absolutely certain of anything, and right now you're maximally certain that you uh, are not convinced that God exists, then that would have to be included in the, the anything spectrum. Yes, so, but, but saying I do not believe that we can be absolutely certain is not the same as saying I believe we cannot be absolutely certain. Those right. are not the same thing. Yeah, you've got to prove both sides. You've got to prove both claims, the, the positive claim and the negative claim. So... Um, I believe there is a teapot in between the uh, orbit of Earth and Mars. Must be proven just like I believe there is not a teapot between Earth and Mars. Now, you can start with a null hypothesis and a default position. But it's also the same thing as if I say I am not convinced the defendant is guilty, that does not mean I believe the defendant is innocent. I'm just telling you what I'm not convinced. Right. 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 I understand that. Okay. Um, okay. So um, if... If you have like another second, um, there is one other thing that uh, I kind of wanted to touch on. If, if you got to move on, that's cool. We'll give you another. Ask Jim. Go, go for it. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, so on on other previous calls, like uh, I, I've heard you uh, talking about how you don't view things like what is commonly referred to as like thought crime, um, like someone who has like thoughts of molesting children that you don't view that as an act of immorality only if they so, act on it it's an act of immorality correct mm -hmm. first of all you can't know what someone's thoughts are as far as i can tell um sure. so i don't know how you could criminalize someone's thoughts you could only criminalize or judge actions now those actions may include actually doing the thing that they're thinking about those actions might also include talking about 
and promoting the thing that they're doing, but the thought mm -hmm. itself is, isn't necessarily a problem. And in some cases, there are people who have thoughts and desires to do something which would be immoral if they acted upon it. And the fact that they continually resist that, that impulse, that motivation, which they have no control over, they can't help the thoughts that enter their brain or not immediately, the fact that they don't act on it should be laudable. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sure, and, and, and I understand that too, and I agree with that. Um, but it's like you see no issue at all with someone thinking about like molesting children. I do see an issue with it. Yeah. In that, once somebody has those desires, that s certainly increases the likelihood they they are more likely to act on those desires than someone who never has those desires. And so, if they're willing to talk to someone to find ways to curb those desires and hopefully change those desires that results in an even decreased chance that they're going to act on those. It's not that the thought isn't potentially a problem. It's that you don't have access to the thought and the thought on its own isn't a problem. Okay. That was the exact conclusion that I was going to mention, so you nailed it. So <laughs> thanks for taking my Wait, call, Wait, Jonathan, and you're a theist? Yes, I am a Christian. Wow. Oh. So I, hang on. I, I want to just pause. Do you believe sure. in scientists? So, uh, hey, is science real? Uh, is science real? Uh, I don't think I understand your question. So the findings of science, um, well, there was a caller who called in a minute ago that just said science isn't real. Um, anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I, I believe uh, a lot of what the scientific community... Yeah, like, is, is the age of the Earth closer to six to 10,000 years or closer to three and a half billion years? I'm definitely on the three and a half billion side. Yeah. Of this. <laughs> uh, do, do vaccines cause autism? Uh, I don't know enough about that, but I'm guessing they don't. Okay. Is the Earth more likely an oblate spheroid or flat? Uh, I'm going to go with sphere. My dad will say it's flat. <laughs> <laughs> ha have human beings visited the moon? Uh, I believe they have. Oh my gosh! So I just want to. So here's a Christian theist, who we didn't we didn't have to touch on religion at all. We had a mm -hmm. philosophical discussion about belief and about um, thought crimes. Came to an agreement on all that, and seems to be on board with a lot of the science. So just like somebody called Guinness, this is not a show that just hates <laughs> hates on theists and Christians and makes them look, feel or look stupid. We actually can have discussions. Yeah. Anyway, Jonathan, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate it. Yeah, you guys, thanks. That's uh, that was refreshing. It's a good time when that happens. Yeah, that is a.